Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way. Today it's all about doing or making or recreating the Nick Agar Viking Sunset Bowl. So if you don't know what one of these bowls is, or if you don't, if you've never heard of uh, Nick, Nick is a very good friend of mine and of the company as an Axminster and Tools. We've been working together well over 25 years now, and Nick came up with this um, this design of bowl whilst on one of the uh, Norwegian wood turning cruises, um, and he just wanted to do something signature for the cruise and uh, and something a bit different. So this is my recreation of one of his fantastic bowls. It's a very poor effort, so please don't. Um, judge me on it but i was just trying to recreate one of his bowls uh, from the kit that we sell through chromacraft so i'll show you the kit in a moment but this is one of the the bowls so it's decorated on both sides i still need to take the foot off of this one here so um so don't worry about that we will do that later on so we're going to start today and this is going to be a two-parter and the two parts are going to consist of firstly um, shaping the back and then using all the texturing tools that you may have seen Jason use a few weeks ago and also some of the punches or stamps and then we need to let that dry um, uh, I'm going to go through the processes, the base colours um, what we use to get that lovely silver colour um, and then once we've done that we're going to leave that for, for the day and then we're going to move on after that to the top rim and then colouring all of these lovely pieces here so um, there's quite a lot to do there's a lot of colour now within the kit and let me just get the kit for you to show you the kit contains everything you're going to need to recreate it in terms of colour you have to supply your own timber okay so once you've got the timber um, then it's the kit to to uh, to give you all the colours so you can see there if I open the box up what we've got inside are all the wonderful Chromacraft uh, wood stains and dyes okay to, to get the colors that we need we've also got a clear sealer in here as well so the clear sealer is almost like a dye itself really but it's uh, just to go over the top one thing I just want to grab for you as well is the let me see if I can dig it out it's a WR RU20 which is the reducible um, urethane that's just uh, again it's another type of sealer that we'll talk about later on um, and then we've got our acrylic lacquer to go over the top of the stains just to give you that lovely gloss uh, finish that's on the yellow and the orange in there and then of course one of the most important parts is going to be your um, Viking silver uh, chroma gilt okay we're going to look at how we apply all of these but there we are as one kit to take away for you to recreate your, your own um, Viking sunset bowl okay so that we've got a lot to do this is another another bowl here that we've half started so again we've got to that point where um, we've done the back we've got a hold point and then once we've done that we can turn it over to take the middle out and then hopefully get a similar sort of effect or finish as we've got here um, this isn't a, a quick project you have to take your time with this this um, the silver effect that we've got on the back takes a, a lot of time um, to go over and over with lots of coats if you do one single coat quickly and thickly what you'll do is you'll fill in all those lovely patterns that you've made and that's one thing or difference between chroma gilts um, and things like um, decorating waxes decorating waxes and things like liming wax all those sorts of things you fill in the indents with chroma gilt you pick out the high spots you want to leave the indents so that means that you have to put your chroma gilts on very um, uh, sparsely um, but lots of coats just to get that solid color um, and when you do that you get a lovely single surface um, non patchy at all and it, so it's worth taking your time it, it gives you a very dense look so there we are lots to do like I say so let's crack on it's always best if you can pick some timber with a little bit of a little bit of I don't know sort of pattern to it and what I've done here this is a piece of well, this is a crotch section so um, what we have is a lot of quilting um, on this area here I have put that on the underside because I'm going to take away most of the, the the top surface if you think about the bowl itself the at the moment the bowl is around that way on this bowl blank I want to cut through and into this attractive grain there's not so much of it on the top so where I don't want it is here because I'm going to cover I'm going to cover that up but as I cut through the bowl into the bottom this is where I want it I want it to really shine through on these bottom areas that the dye will actually um, pick that that uh, grain out as well 
So it's quite important that you understand your, your timber, you understand where everything's coming from. I'm just going to put those bowls to one side for the minute. We'll go back to them as we um, go through the process. But let's have a look. We're going to go for a fairly big um, tool rest to start with. Let's just get an idea of where center is. Um, this is as well as the, um, using the Viking Sunset kit um, and creating the bowl. There's a lot of basic bowl turning techniques going to be looked at today. Is it a piece of sycamore? It's like I said, it's a wonderful uh, grain to this sycamore, but the processes to create it at this stage are exactly the same. I'm going to reference one of those bowls down there because I quite like the way that that turned out. So um, we're going to keep referring to that. First of all, of course, we need to rough it down to a cylinder. I've actually got this held on the chuck with a faceplate ring, so he's not on a faceplate at the moment. That means I can take it on and off fairly quickly. Not that I need to, just in case I do. But let's let's just get it down to a nice round. And I'm going to start with a lumpy bowl gouge, so we're going to go to the half inch and just a gentle pull cut initially. Now look, the shavings are flying up in my face and so my hands on top. Pull the chisel toward me, but my hands now just stopping those shavings from coming up and hitting me. There we are, we're down to a nice flat surface. Now I'm just going to stop and show you what that looks like. I don't want to take too much of that grain away because it is striking, look at that immediately pops out in front of us that that crotch section is is wonderful don't want to take too much of that way so i'm going to stop there um, all i'm going to do now is create a little hole point here and we're going to use c jaws to hold the the um the bowl and then i can start working on shape okay i'm hoping that a lot of that remains because that will look wonderful in the bottom of the bowl so let's just size our c jaws and we'll make a mark with the with the dividers i'm going to use the speed sizer here so we want to um, look at the internal grip for my C jaw, so lining up the dividers. There we are. Don't be alarmed that that looks a little bit small. It's going to be enough for what we want. And then just drag out some weight, so around about 3 mil of a foot I'm looking for. Don't feel you have to use the whole of the bowl blank. I've, I've said this a lot of times actually. Um, feeling that you have to use the whole of the bowl blank means that you sometimes can sacrifice design, which we obviously don't want to do. There we are. That's going to be a big enough foot. Let me just define that with a parting tool a moment. There we go. And then just make sure that foot's nice and even on the bottom okay so let me grab my my bowl I've already turned just so we can get a reference yeah we're holding on to some of that lovely marking good so this is what I want to do there's several several um, key elements here. We've got lots of ridges, so the base. Um, we've got another little ridge here. It's just like light, sort of layered um, layered metal really, I suppose. So there are lots of these little steps is what I want to recreate. I really like that. So let's say the base is going to be true base about there. So we'll just step away from that.
we are. So what we've done, we've hit some silica. And you're always going to get it sometimes in in, um, uh, in sycamore. You, you hit these horrible silica lines. Now you can see, I don't know whether you can pick that out. Um, there's a white seam that's running through here. That's silica. Basically, it's a bit of stone. Um, you can just see it at the top as well. And that will take the edge off your chisel straight away. So I'm going to persevere with the chisel that I've got at the moment. Otherwise, I'll be back and forward sharpening constantly. And then once we've got rid of that that horrible bit, then I'll go back to a I'll resharpen the tool. Go back to a a decent sharp one. But it's yeah, it's just something that happens. And I felt that instantly. The edge just completely went. So Let's try and use a different part of the tool. sooner we get through that the better now look you can see that seam it's a horrible little seam but we're getting there now we're getting past it let me just use the bottom of the gouge just to um, because it's a sharp area I'm just going to use the bottom of the gouge if you're going to do this just make sure you turn that flute all the way in So that's not your normal direction of cut. I'm just trying to get past that horrible bit. And then we can go back to cutting normally. Right, I think. I think we should be okay now. So we can start looking at... Um, at um, just getting that shape just right. Let me just grab a sharp tool because that one's well past its useful life now. So grab another chisel, which is lovely and sharp. And we're still going to stick with a half inch for the minute. just using a pull cut just to start with and I think I'm going to start thinking about the shape so a little bit more waste away from that area there we are and if you look at the one that I've already done over here it's a very slight OG so you can just see that shape you've got a nice little convex curve here going down to a concave and then those ridges so we want to try and recreate something like that like I said, I'm really fond of that shape. So, um, bearing in mind, we're going to come into a little concave first from the base. There we are. And then we're going to have a little recess. and into that concave let's have a look and see where that silica is is it still there there's a little bit left I'm not too worried about it now okay so that's the basic shape just tidying up so now Let's put the individual little steps in, so... Of 
gone blunt again. Let's go for another tool. It's that quickly. The minute you hit one of those little pockets, you will take the edge off. There we are. There's the silica right there. You can see I felt it, um, but it's basically a little stone. So let's get past with the blunt one first. do one more of those so we're going to come back down again stop there and we want to I think that'll do let me just try and cut through that horrible bit of silica one more time you'll see the chisel go blunt We are and it's blunt again. Let's try a different part of the tool. Nope, it's given up. So another sharp chisel. There we are. Now I'm just gonna look at the shape. What I don't want that silica to affect what's happening is actually caused a bit of an issue. So let's drag cut again, just gently. Just things we have to deal with. It's not always plain sailing. No, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's where we're going to leave that there we are, let's grab the skew, I'm just going to do a little bit of a scrape and just crisp up all of these little lines that I've made so just using this the skew as a little negative rake scraper stop let's double check see what we've got I, what I don't want at this stage is massively torn grain because that's going to cause me problems um, I'll have to reshape it by rough sanding so I don't want that there we are that's fine happy with that I think we can now start looking at sanding let me just clean up this outer edge because this is going to be a nice soft edge I'm hoping so I'll do that with the firstly with the gouge just skim with the skew just to take a little bit of that sharpness away and then something with the bottom here let's go slightly elongate that curve We are going to do something with that. When we finish this later on, we're going to do something with the base here. We'll decorate the base. We don't want to leave that um, unfinished. So it's down to sharpening next. So I'm going to put the dust extraction on. You know the form. You'll 
still be able to hear what I'm saying, hopefully. And if you haven't guessed already, this is not a live video. This is a recorded one, so hopefully that you're taking part in the chat and uh, you know that there is someone uh, still there answering your questions. Um, so please ask the questions. Even if you, they don't know the, the answers right there and then, I'll be able to get back to you um, with them later on. So please ask the questions as and when. You'll probably, like normal, be answering each other's uh, questions anyway. So keep going with it. But look, there we are. That's what we've got so far. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding now. The good thing is we don't have to go up to like the 400, the 600 grits and worry about seeing all the scratches because we're going to spray over the top of this. This is all about the embellishment. Um, so it's going to be completely covered. What we must make sure is we've got rid of all the tears and all that sort of torn up grain, messy grain. So that's got to disappear. Um, once we've sanded up to about 320, um, 240 to 320, then we can start putting on all the embellishment. We can start playing with the texturing tools, we can start playing with the punches and all those sorts of things. Now, we have got punches coming, so at the moment we're only doing number and letter punches. Um, however, here's my little sample, the new punches that are going to be coming. These wonderful little, um, little patterns, and you can see uh, there, there's an awful lot of patterns that you can play with. I'm going to demonstrate just a few of them if I can get the right camera. There we are. So how cool are they? So they will be arriving soon. We've got a few coming over on it by air um, just to speed the process up a little bit. But yes, those are what we're going to be doing. However, you can use anything for punching. I've just brought a couple of examples here. Um, I've got a bit of copper pipe. I've got an old bolt an old bolt we've got an old sawn off head of a, a an allen key so there's loads of things that you can use the end of that for instance would be quite cool knocked in but i'll show you what i mean two secs let's get this uh, outside surface sanded up dust extraction on i'm going to start with 100 grit work our way through 100 150 240 <coughs> play speed down so you don't get too much dust flying in the air don't forget your bowl sander as well, of course. Just making sure things don't get too hot. So I'm going to stay for a, a good length of time with this 100 grit. Get rid of all the nasties, any tears that might be here. stop in a minute just to double check to make sure all the nasties have gone. Right, let's just have a quick stop and check. So I'm looking for tears. Well, it looks like that crit has done its job. So let's go up to 150.
time now we could probably go to the bowl sander I might put something like a 180 grit on there if we look at what we've got 180 grit should be fine what I don't want to have is like deep scratches and the deep scratch is really going to be coming from those really coarse grades so if we can do this and I think we're going to be almost then ready to start the, the decorating phase just going to turn the base speed up a little bit for this And the only reason I've done that really is this is where we can get some momentum to the bowl sander. Did I do that flat base? Can't remember. It's not too bad. There we are. That'll do. Well, it's not that, that it, it's not that it'll do. That will be enough because. Like I say, we don't need to go really, really fine. Because now, once I put that four, the, the 240 over the top. Yeah, we'll get rid of enough of the scratches that will not be seen when we cover it. Now, one other thing. One other reason not to go to 400 and 600. If you do that, you almost create a barrier for the die. The die finds it very difficult to penetrate that glazed surface that you have. Um, incidentally, in the kit you'll find a sheet of instructions that will take you through this process step by step. So refer back to this video, refer to the instructions. If you're lucky enough to see Nick demonstrating it, refer back to that. There we are. Let's just stop, double check. We're good, we're good. Like it. Right, so now we're gonna we're gonna start the process of this decoration off by creating our marks with our texturing tools. So we can have a quick look at this one. What we have here, we have really using the crown texturing tools. We have all these serrations by manipulating the texturing tool, um, offering it a different angle each time. You can get these different types of, of markings. But what we're also gonna do is leave some space that we can put some punch markings in as well okay so these circles and triangles this lovely lo little sort of cascade um, decoration here so we're going to start with the serrations from the um, texturing tools then we'll move on to the punches i mustn't forget to leave space so i'm going to keep that one there to remind me i'm going to bring the tool rest back now the the tools we're going to look at are these these are my favorite uh, pair so basically they're the, sa it's the same sort of thing except one's big one small it's as simple as that um, now depending on where you offer them to um, whether you're offer them straight whether you're offering them at an angle they will give you a different serration so that's what we're going to do now let's start let's start right on the rim we're going to get that lovely um, line pattern we're going to offer the tool up dead flat for that so in line now look what I need to do I need to bring that tool rest back far enough that I can get good movement with this but not so far back that we get um, a difficult cut. And what I mean by difficult cut? Too much leverage on you, basically. Now, this is going to be really loud, so close your ears just for a minute. Now, I want to go nice and flat. I'm going to add a little bit of pressure on this as well. and I'm going to have a check let's see what we've got now I don't know whether you can see that from there it's difficult to see because it's white on white certainly when we start putting the colour on later on it will definitely come out now let me just do that again in fact what I'm going to do is put my ear defenders on as we do that because that is so deafening we might need to turn the camera the um, microphones down a little bit So I'm going to do the same sort of thing now, right in the corner here, so a, a bit of a taper cut. So 
same here. And then we're going to use the corner. One of my favourite cuts. Of. Slightly different. Let's go for yeah, right then. Let's stop and see what we've got. We should have some wonderful markings. We have these lovely markings. I love, especially love these right on the corner. Again, you probably can't see that close, but they've got some wonderful little markings going on. So where are we? That's okay. Let's get something a little bit bolder now then. He's coming back the other way got that lovely little marking going on there. Well I think we're almost there. I think it's probably time for some punches. Let's just nah, let's go one more. That just gives a little dot. You know what I mean? these lovely little dots going on so I'm happy I think that's good I think we're going to start um, using the punches Let me just take my microphone my ear defenders off I'm going to add a couple of little lines with the skew but this is you I mean you can do whatever you want here you can add add lines all over the place look I'm just doing a little cut with the tip of the skew do another one. Let's frame this nice marking here. One line either side there. Do the same up here. You have complete freedom to do what you want. Good. Before we go any further, what we'll do, we'll just go over that now with a brass brush. Brass brush just takes the fur from all of these marks because they look quite crisp, but they they have little sort of fibrous areas. So just a little bit of going over with Ben Sway brush. He uses this on his creepers in the morning. So I've just nicked it out just for the moment. I'll put that back before he realises it's gone. There we are. We're good, we're ready to go. So let me, again, we're just going to pop the old bowl blank to one side. Let's start with some of these punches. I have a, a preference. Around the top here, we're going to do one of those little uh, rosettes, or not, what am I talking about? Not rosette, a little, little like, like drape sort of look so specific um, specific punches that one right there it's sort of like a moon a moon punch sort of funny funny sort of half moon shape and then beneath that where is he 
It looks like a little, I don't know what it's supposed to be actually, I think it's supposed to be. It's just a little tree thing. Alright, so that's going to be beneath. Now this is going to take a long time, so we're going to speed things up a little bit. And basically all I'm going to do, pop the punch on and give it a, a tap like that. That's all we're doing, just one little mark. Come in nice and close, and there you go, that little half moon shape. And then we're just going to follow it around, so I'll do another one. And don't worry, you don't have to be too precise, doesn't matter. There we are, so I'm just going to do a few of those for you because I want to show you what we're then going to put in between. So I'm going to put this one in upside down right in between the two marks. And we're going to do that all the way around. So you can see there's quite a lot to do. But by the time you go all the way around, you've got that little drape uh, coming down. So it's quite a nice, quite a nice um, pattern. So right, let's go. Okay, so there we are. We've done the first bit um, around this rim, so we've got that lovely little draped um, effect. We're now going to go through another range of, or another set um, of uh, punches, and we're going to go through these other bare areas. So again, we're going to speed this up um, just to make it more bearable for you guys. Here he goes.
So there we are. That's all of the stamps done. Takes a little bit of time. That was sped up for you, but that was about half an hour's worth of work. Um, our next job is to colour this. So we've done all that work. Remember what Chroma Craft, or sorry, Chroma Gilts are designed to do. They're designed to pick out all the highlights, all the high spots. So what we want to do is make sure that all those indentations are now full of colour. So we're going to use a black to do that. And we're going to use the black Chroma Craft um, uh, stains. And I'm going to apply those with an airbrush. The idea now that we apply the black and then we apply the clear sealer again with an airbrush. So we're going to do that and then we're just going to let it dry just for a little bit um, before we then put the chroma gilts on. So let's apply the black nice and slow with the lathe. I'm there running, that's just under the 500. I'm going to have dust extraction, dust extraction on only because I don't want to fill the air with any excess um, stain. So just to protect myself as much as anything. Um, I don't have to worry uh, about anything else, just to get the colour on now. Don't have to worry about the dust, but if you want to just dust the lay down, absolutely carry on. So here you go, so I've got my little airbrush. Um, uh, airline here. We're going to go with our black. I've got, I'm applying the colour with the suction fed um, SB50. Um, the little compressor down here, a little specifically made, or purposely made, airbrush compressor. And we're just going to start applying. Remember, don't apply too much too soon. So look, this is the first coat. Right, you can barely see it. Let me just stop the lathe and show you. There we are, it's just a very slight off grey. I'm going to apply another one. If you apply this too quickly and try and get it done in one or two passes, you're going to get a very wet solution on there. It's going to be spraying all over the place. So the idea with um, an airbrush or the, the ink, the dyes that come from the airbrush, is it goes on dry. So you can just keep applying. Nice steady movements. See each pass it gets darker and darker and darker. going to stop for a minute just double check that it's looking good it's starting to look proper black now I'm going to go on just for a little bit more That's all we need. What I'm going to do now, we're going to wait for a, a couple of minutes just to let that properly dry. You can always, you could also add a craft dryer to this if you want to. And you've seen me use my craft dryers before, just like mini hair dryers, just just to calm everything down a little bit. But that'll take probably just a couple of seconds now. Normally, if you're not going quite so heavy, that'll be instantly dry. It's touch dry for me. You can see there's only a, a, a smidge in there coming off. It's not soaking wet. Um, but then what we're going to do after that is go over that with a clear. So it's a, basically, it's a clear lacquer. Um, and it just creates that barrier 
to stop okay just to stop everything from um, coming off when you start using the, the chroma gilts um, so again apply with an airbrush spray over the top um, completely colorless but it seals that black into position I've done this before when I haven't actually used that I've got away with it because I've left it for a little bit but um, just just helps a little bit seals locks everything in um, and it's the same sort of makeup as the actual dye as well it's basically a clear dye if that makes any sense at all okay that's all in the kit so well, there we are we'll wait there for five seconds let that dry and then we'll go over with the gilt itself Right, okay, so that's dried. We've put the clear sealer on, so we're now ready to use the chroma gilt. One thing you've got to make sure you, you have, you've got to have gloves on, and make sure those gloves are tight-fitting. If they're baggy on your fingers, where you're going to apply them, what you'll find is you end up ragging the um, chroma gilt into those low spots, the very areas that you want to make sure stay black. So it has to be quite tight. Um, and this is something that Nick showed me personally. He said, make sure um, when you do it, you get a minimal amount on that forefinger. So a little bit on your thumb and then a little bit on your finger and just wipe it in so you've got no big excess on that finger to start with. So just a little bit. And then a little, um, just a swirling action really. And look, you'll see what happens instantly. You can see those low bits start coming forward. Now these are quite deep. Once you go to the outer edge, they're not as deep and it's very easy to get any excess um, chroma gilt into those low areas. So I can't stress enough, little and often with this gilt. Now this is going to very much like the, um, the first process of putting on the stamps. This is going to take a while because what we don't want to do is lather on loads just to try and get a depth of body there and fill the, the grooves. So we're going to go around. And then we're going to go around again and then probably a third and fourth time until we get the depth of color that we actually want so here it goes for the speed it up again okay so there we are that's the first coat we're going to go around it again usually leaving it um, a couple of hours in between coats just to let it set properly um, so I'm going to leave it now I'm going to come back in a minute and uh, do the next coat and um, just see where we go I'm going to keep going until it's got the proper depth of color that I want so come back later <laughs> 